Nice big old juicy worms. There we go. Got him. That's the size we're looking for right there. These are big bass treats right here. No! Got him. Oh, that feels a little better. Oh, got something. Got something. Oh, it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Oh, man. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? You know what? Let me step over here in the shade. I've got this massive shadow on my face eyes. Oh, boy. Now I'm dark. There we go. Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we've got lake number 5,000 behind me. One of the lakes that we fish on occasion on this channel. Not really that often. Maybe we will more in the future after today though. Between this lake right here, a tiny little runoff pond from the main lake, between those two bodies of water and the stuff that I've got in the back of that truck right there, we are going to attempt the freshwater trophy bass food chain fishing challenge today. Now, for those of you who don't know what a food chain fishing challenge is, it's been done a couple times on YouTube, but I, I really haven't seen anybody do it in this particular way. So what we are going to attempt to do, what makes this a food chain fishing challenge is basically we start with the very bottom of the food chain. And that would be something like a worm or a cricket um, you know, something that's just, it gets eaten by absolutely everything. We then take that creature, the very bottom of the food chain, we attempt to catch a higher fish on the food chain. In this case would be a brim, AKA a bluegill, some other kind of panfish, medium size. We then take that panfish that is now a trophy bass snack size. We put it on a hook and we put it out into the main lake and wait for that trophy six, seven, eight, nine, ten pound bass to come by and eat it and we catch it and that's how this challenge works. Now I was recently told the other day by the owner of this pond that he caught a ten pounder out here a few years ago. Now nobody's really fished it that much since then except for me but I've never fished it this way. He said that's how you catch the trophy bass. You've got to get yourself a nice size little bluegill or a brim whatever you want to call it. Put it on a hook chuck it out here near this dock right here. So I thought to myself why not try a little food chain fishing challenge and let's just make things really difficult on ourselves. Now I'm already seeing like some, some bait in the water, some bluegills. I may try to like cast net some of these before I even, before I even try to fish with the little worms or the bottom of the food chain bait. I don't know, we're gonna, but the, basically as long as we can gather some nice size brim to catch these trophy bass, then I think that will count as part of being a part of a food chain fishing challenge. So however we can catch them, that'll just have to work. Guys, I'm so excited, I hope you are too. If we can catch a monster out here, I've never caught anything more than like two pounds out here. That's the best part about this. So if we end up catching like a legitimate trophy bass, I'm just gonna be tickled pink. So for my bottom bait of choice of the food chain, I chose some good old wormy squirmies. There's none, they're all down at the bottom. There they are. Nice big old juicy worms. We could have used crickets, we could have used a bunch of other things, you know, whatever. Got our little, oh wow. Got our little minnow bucket right there with a the little bubbler. That way we can keep the fish that we catch with the worms alive a little bit longer in that bait bucket. And then we have our cast net too. Oh God, it's attached to me. Just in case we decide to use it. One thing's for sure folks, this is gonna be a load of fun. Well gosh guys, before we even try to fish for the bigger ones, I see like 50 pretty decent sized ones right here. I'm gonna try to throw the cast net at them real quick. Now there's a couple like bass moved up on these bluegills. What is going on here? We might catch some bass and some bluegill on this cast net. That is if I can even throw the dang thing with any accuracy at all. Oh my God, there's like a billion of them. Oh, that had to have got some. That had to have got some. Oh yeah, we got some. We got some. <laughs> we haven't even gone fishing for them yet. We just got like a nice little handful of decent sized ones. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go, baby. Let's go look at those. Those are freaking perfect. These are absolutely perfect size. They're a little small. Some of them are. We're gonna keep a couple of these nice sized ones. I'm not gonna keep all the real small ones because it's just, we're not gonna need them. Woo! Hopefully you don't get eaten by a bass upon re-entry. Some bubbles in there all right we got five decent ones right off the get-go that's what i'm talking about baby kids always practice your cast netting skills <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you i've been working on it like hardcore the last few days filming some different videos but it's helpful you pull up to a spot like this 
and there's like there was a million of those little bluegills just sitting there and boom toss you a little cast net out there catch a few of them real quick okay now we need to get back to our actual mission here there we are i got some super tiny hooks just for this occasion i actually got some weighted ones too yeah let's try one of these actually you know what we don't even know if we're going to need a weighted hook yet let's just throw on one of these tiny little hooks it's a good little brim size hook right there i think just on a simple little bobber setup chunk a piece of worm on it and supposedly these guys are starving in this little puddle and they're just going to be very glad to have something to eat let's see we're going to need our worms rod and reel and our bait bucket that now has a few brim already in it but we need to get some maybe some slightly bigger ones i think that would be good now one thing that's on my mind last time i came down to this little puddle just to kind of see what was going on i did step on a snake i'm pretty sure that was like a year ago like last summer but i stepped right on a snake and by the grace of god he didn't bite me but he very easily could have so we're gonna have to be very careful and make sure we scare off any snakes that might be hanging around where are you guys at i know there's a snake down here there always is now i'm just wearing shorts of course because that's smart okay well no snakes yet now the guy who who told me about this place and this plan he actually told me that crickets were the move but because of the covid nonsense we really don't have a lot of opportunities to buy crickets anymore my local bait shops are kind of screwed up because of covid get this joker hooked a few times this tiny little hook let's flip her on in here and see what's going on oh yeah i see stuff swimming over to it i see little fish swimming over to it it's getting annihilated oh i just had a hit I think I retrieved it in a little too quick. <laughs> as soon as it hit the water, I saw a little brim swimming over to it. He was not lying. Okay, I think we're gonna have to make our worm pieces a little bit smaller. Let's try that again. You gotta figure these guys are like stuck in this little pool, you know? They're kind of, they're probably starving. Oh, wow. That one got hit immediately too. I think he got my worm. Yep, he sure did. Okay, we're gonna have to make our worm pieces really small. <laughs> I'm being pickpocketed here. What about a tiny little piece of worm going right down the hook? That might be the move here. All right, this is the one right here. I can feel it. Got him! Got him! Got him! Look at that. That's a big one. That might be too big. That might be too big right there. Nah, I think it's I think it's okay. Alright, that's a big one, but I mean if you're trying to catch a trophy bass, no, we lost him. If you're trying to catch a trophy bass, that might be the size that you need. Let's see if we can catch a couple more like that. I don't want to catch too many because I don't want to end up like wasting any of these guys or, you know, catching a bunch of them and then screwing them up in the bait bucket and then mess, you know, killing them or something like that. Yeah, the small little piece of worm, that was the ticket. Oh, I just broke my rig off. I was snagged and I broke my rig off. Well, shoot well we did catch one big one and we got those other medium sized ones from our cast netting adventure so here's what we'll do since we do already have a nice little bucket full including that big one we can put that big one out right now let's go ahead and get rigged up for the bass fishing portion of this get a couple lines out a couple bobbers out maybe one medium sized bluegill and one in the big one and then if we start running out of bluegills we will either a use the worms to catch some more out of this little puddle or b we'll just cast net some if we just see them walking around swimming around excuse me fish don't typically walk as far as my rig goes i've just basically got like a circle hook and i was advised by people that know that circle hooks are really good because if you put if you put your rig down you know and you're just letting it swim around and the fish grabs uh grabs your bait and maybe you can't run over there quite quick enough to set the hook the circle hook will, will get you know We'll get the fish hooked most of the time just by itself just from him chewing on that big old bluegill big circle hook not even really big but you know for bass it's a big big circle hook for a catfish it'll probably be small and this this particular combo is a casting combo it's a it's a heavy rod it's got heavy line on i think it's got like 20 pound line and we're just going to do a little bobber guy up at the top a big bobber because a bluegill this size is going to be able to pull down most other bobbers 
All right, Mr. Big Bluegill, we need you. You're up. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we are gonna back hook this guy right through the back meat. That skin is tough to pierce. That way he can swim. He is unencumbered and he can swim as far as he wants to. He can go as deep as he wants. I've got this rig pretty, rigged pretty dang deep. We've got some deep water out here. And I'm just thinking, you know, if we're gonna catch a big one, it's gonna be out here in the deep. So let's fire him on out here. Boom. Now hopefully, yep, he's woken up. And now he is just, he is swimming, swimming around. Let's get the other, maybe a medium sized bluegill rigged up. Let that little guy do the same. Let him swim around some. Okay, Mr. Medium sized bluegill. Gonna do you the exact same way. Through the back, avoid the sparrings. We don't want to kill the bluegill. We want him to be alive and well and able to swim because he needs to get out there and he needs to find Mr. Big Bass for us. You know, I'm, got, I'm seeing a lot of encouraging signs that this might actually work today. First sign, as I throw him out here, is the water is a lot clearer than it normally is. The water out here is typically really dirty, but today, for whatever reason, maybe because it hasn't rained in a while, it's, it's actually pretty, uh, it's pretty clean. So the hope would be those big bass are gonna see those bluegill out there in the deep water swimming around, struggling. Looks like they might even be, be injured and just come up and get himself a nice little easy meal. Now comes the tough part, that's the waiting. But while I'm waiting, there's about a billion bait fish by this dock just hanging out. I may just uh, practice my cast netting skills a little bit because there are so many, it's freaking crazy. Holy crap, one of my bobbers just went down completely. Now it's back up. Whoa, it went down so hard that it created like a, a wake. Jeez, that's crazy. Oh, I better keep a close eye. I was about to grab my camera and try to show you guys how many bait fish there actually are next to this dock. But holy moly, I better keep a freaking close eye on my bobs. Same one just went down again. Oh, it's the smaller bluegill, but still. Oh, got something. Got something. Oh, it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Oh, man. Oh, gosh, he's running right to this dock and to this other line. Come on, be good. Be a big fish. No, you can't go into the dock. Oh, he's not big. He's not big. He's nice, though. Nice for this lake, which is to say he's like two pounds. Whoa. First fish of the day for the food chain fishing challenge. And like I said, not exactly a big one, but for this lake, it's actually not bad at all. Check that circle hook. Notice how it got him. Whew, I had to come running over here because once again, I was messing around at my truck. Wow. So boom, success. Food chain fishing challenge is a success. That is so cool. Now, technically that was on the bluegill one of the bluegills that I cast netted. So I don't know if you want to count this like as a hardcore win or not. Still pretty dang cool. I bet you that was the same fish that had hit it that first time and maybe had kind of circled back around, made another pass at it. God, same exact thing. I looked up again. I was re-rigging the little uh, bluegill rig that I broke off a minute ago. I looked up and the joker was gone again. And that time he had it. And that circle hook did exactly what we wanted the circle hooks to do. And that is to be able to hook the fish even when we're late getting there. So let's get another medium sized bluegill because that's all we have at this point is small, not really medium, kind of small bluegills. Let's get another one of those bad boys rigged up. Buddy, you look good. Same thing, back hook them. Let's go, baby. I, you know, I really thought it was gonna be a grind and it still might be to catch that big one. I thought it was gonna be kind of a grind because it's the middle of the day. It's kind of, it's you know, it's hot, summertime. Let's get him back out there into the danger zone. It was perfect timing too. I had the bail open on this rod. So, you know, the line just comes out freely. And as I was getting here to pick up the rod, 
all you know all the slack had been taken out so it was perfect timing Whew. our big big bluegill has somehow swam all the way over here to the shallower water i don't know what the heck he's up to these days but he needs to get back out here in the deep because that's where big berthas are they're not going to be shallow i don't think not in the middle of the day back out you go buddy you're gonna have to be the one that really catches us that big fish today you're gonna have to be the one. Uh oh my second bobber's down again the medium sized bluegill come on start just start reeling got him got him ah, he doesn't feel very big he doesn't feel very big and he's not and he just chucked he just spit the bluegill out right there oh come on man what are you guys doing to me dang it that's a hefty little bass right there he's got some freaking got a gut on him look he spit out the bluegill on the way and the bluegill is right there he's all traumatized and half dead oh man circle hook got him again which is great but just not the size of fish we're looking for here thank you buddy but you're really not it well we're moving our way through those dang medium sized ones now aren't we we are just working our way through them which is great i mean hey we're catching fish or at least getting that little bit of excitement when the bobber first goes down for a second you may think to yourself hey this could be a big fish and then you feel that there's no weight on the other side and you're like oh wait a second no it's not a big fish <laughs> another stinky little tiny bass but we're gonna keep chucking them out there because you know the, the thing is the law of averages or however you want to look at this says that if there's small bass out there there's probably big bass too the big bass are always going to be harder to catch they're gonna be harder to fool you gotta sift through some smaller ones sometimes to get them to get those big bass to commit oh look at this one he is swimming like a champ right out of the gate he's gonna get eaten soon the more active <laughs> the bait fish are, whether it's a minnow or whatever, the more active they are in the water. It seems like those are the ones that really get ate good. Okay, well, I'm not upset. I'm not angry. Got two fish and we caught them, you know, without buying our own bait, you know, using nature to do our own bait. But I kind of feel like unless I catch a bass on the exact bluegill that I catch on a worm, that we've technically have not completed a food chain fishing challenge am i right i mean i kind of have that feeling because the ones we've caught so far have been on the medium to small size bluegills which we cast at it so we're really gonna have to catch one we're gonna have to go back to that pit no most likely that that tiny little puddle and catch maybe a couple more decent sized bluegills to really say that we've accomplished our goal today as i shut my camera off the bobber went down no! Got him. Oh, that feels a little better. A little better. Don't think it's huge, but it definitely feels better. Possibly the best one of the day. Come on, buddy. Show yourself. What is that? Is that a bass? It's a chunky guy. Ah, he's still not very big. Oh, he's not big at all. I'm an idiot. Oh, dang it. How was he the smallest one of the day? He actually felt good. He was actually fighting. I'm so confused. Oh my goodness. I just shut off my camera from running up the hill from the puddle. And I came up here and they were both up still. But then all of a sudden, they were both down. Or one of them was down. And now I'm snagged. What about you, big guy? Are you still okay? Well, he ain't swimming too great. He ain't swimming great, but he's alive. And he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to do something for us here. He's really not swimming very well. He's probably on the verge of death. I mean, we're doing the challenge, kinda. We're kinda doing well. The only thing I can assume is that these smaller bluegills are just producing smaller fish. And I mean, that makes sense, you know? That big bluegill is not gonna get eaten by a two pound bass that big bluegill is going to need like a four or five plus with a big old mouth to come along and eat him well i got two pieces of good good news one i mean we're catching fish 
But two, we are running out of small bluegills, which is good in the sense that we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board here. And to get that big fish, we're really gonna have to catch a bigger size bluegill. That's just all there is to it. The size bluegill is just, I don't think it's gonna yield us that really big fish. Oh boy, I got another one over here. Come on, be big. He's not. He came off, actually. That's why I didn't feel big, because all I could feel was the bluegill. That was a weird one. That one actually kind of, the bottom went down really slow instead of like a boom and just going, which is typically how bass eat live bait. You know, the bobber just goes and it's disappeared. But that time, man, my dude's looking a little stressed out. Every time I cast one like out straight ahead of me like this, I mean, there's a, that's, I think that's where all the fish have come. I've been like straight out. There's even like a little sandbar. You guys may not be able to see it. But there's some shallow water that kind of comes out into this deep water. So that would make sense that that's a big, big time area or a big time traffic area for bass, you know? Well, we're about to be down to the last bluegill. That one, the one that just got hit, I think he experienced a little bit too much trauma. He's done for, he's not swimming. He's floating on me, which means we got to go to his counterpart, the last bluegill, which is good. That'll give us a chance to do a nice little water change too. All right, buddy, are you the chosen one? This is like the smallest one of the entire bunch. Literally smallest one. Wouldn't that be something though? The smallest bluegill gets the biggest bass. I'm willing to believe. Do you guys believe? We've all got to believe in order for this to work. Beautiful, right there in that sandbar. That should be a fish. Oh, we just got a bite, but it came back up. Oh, come on now. He's still getting messed with. Yep, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Come on, this has got to be something bigger. Oh, it came off. Got my dang bluegill. He sure did. I got I was too late. Oh I should have just I should have ran down here the first time I saw him get bit. Man, the one that got away. I didn't feel any weight, so by the time I got to it, I think it was already gone. Well, that leaves us with Big Bertha, which I may just leave out here while I go try to catch some more. To be honest with you, I don't know how much more this big bluegill's got left in it. I may just grant him his freedom. He's pretty big anyways. He might even be a tad bit too big like we discussed. He's not looking too hot. He's kind of bleeding a little bit. So I think let's just let him, let's just grant him his freedom here. Well, he swam off, so he might survive. Fish are pretty tough. They're a lot tougher than we get them credit for sometimes. Well, boys, you know what that means? We're going back to the hole, the puddle. The fish, the fish puddle with some worms and a bucket. Ooh, there he goes, right there. Snake, you guys see that? What'd I tell you? Every freaking time. Not really sure how many we should try to catch. I guess it just depends on the size and a lot of other factors here. I'll switch to an even smaller hook, a really small hook. And just a tiny little piece of worm. There we go. Got him. That's the size we're looking for right there. Beautiful. Not tiny. This is really the size we're looking for, for sure. Took the bobber off. Just kind of put it on like a little weightless or a weighted. Got him, got him again. Yes. A little weighted swim bait hook. Great size one again. A little big, but not, not still not as big as that first one. That first one was definitely too big. This one. He's a little big. We're going to keep him, at least for now. We are killing it. We still got our piece of worm. Let's go, baby. Look at that. We're just yanking him out. <laughs> yes, perfect size again. See, I like these slightly smaller ones. We might fill the bucket with these little guys. Got him. <laughs> Every cast. This is amazing. This is so cool. Well, I've got... Oh, my God. There's a snake swimming around. That's probably the one that I just scared out of here. God, he's down in the freaking pit. Look at that snake. Tell me you guys see that. 
Oh, oh. All right, well, that was a successful little trip right there, I'd say. Let's go, baby. These are big bash treats right here. We're gonna go with kind of the same strategy. We're gonna put the big one on this casting combo because to me, it just makes sense. All right, buddy. Let's get you rigged up and get you out there. We're not gonna catch any more brim for today's bait video. You know, for today's bait portion of the video, we're gonna stick with like the five or so that we had. So there's two of them out there now. So there's at least three or four in the bucket. We are going to ride with these last ones. They're just gonna have to work for us. I don't know what the heck's going on over here. So I, I added a third combo, the combo that I was basically using to catch bluegill on. And I went ahead and put a bluegill on this one too. Another bobber chucked him out. And he has just been getting just, he's gotten hammered like three times, but I don't know what's messing with him. It could be, it could be a turtle, gar, something that's grabbing him, but it can't get the hook in its mouth. I'm keeping a close eye on this one though. Is it a new spot too? I haven't really fished over here, but that little sandbar actually comes out from over here and goes all the way out. So I've got, I've got bluegill bait on pretty much every level of the sandbar and got the biggest one out in the deepest part. So that kind of makes sense to me, but this guy is getting toe up over here. Oh boy, bobber down right in front of me. Got him, he's not big. He's not big. Gosh darn it. I actually moved all the lines. Oh, there goes my bluegill flying through the air. I moved the lines closer to the dock. I, I brought them all in a little bit and it would appear that that did something. I mean, it makes sense. There's so much bait hanging up, hanging out around this dock. Get out of here, dude. There's so much bait hanging around this dock. You got to figure there's bass. Let's see if I can rehook this bluegill. That may have been, that may have been his last stand right there. No, he's done. <laughs> oh, he's done. You did your job, buddy. You caught a fish. I shouldn't have even have asked any more out of you. Running out of bluegills here, boys. We're running out of active participants in our little experiment. And we're catching every stinking dink bass in the lake. I can't blame them. Small bass like bluegills too, apparently. Well, I sure hate to say this, but I think the bite is over, boys. I really don't know how we did not manage to catch or we managed to not catch a single other fish, even with the good bluegills that we had. These guys will get their freedom because they earned it. This guy's still in completely fine shape. He's good to go. He swam right off. It's crazy because the weather has gotten good, but for some reason it's just uh, hasn't led to more bites. Well, boys, I don't know how else to explain what just happened than uh, perhaps saying that it was kind of a freak thing, but the bite just shut off. I mean, all that good fishing that we were doing, although we never really caught that big fish, I mean, we had some fish biting on us. You know, we had fish who were acting interested and uh, turns out that, I don't know, maybe, maybe it just got really hot because it is hot as heck. And maybe the fish just kind of went super deep and just disappeared. All of those things could possibly be true. I don't know, but man, what a load of fun. And I will certain, I will be certain to do this again. Let me get this sh giant shadow off my face. I will be certain to do this again, guys. You just let me know how you want me to do it. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this little uh, food chain fishing challenge. Give me some ideas in the comment section of how I could revise this. Maybe make it better, maybe make it more fun. Um, the most obvious thing would probably probably be for me to start off by like finding my own worms, you know, rather than buying them from a store. That would probably be the, the most obvious thing. But honestly, you know, the fish that I cast in there, that's a pretty primitive way to catch bait fish too without buying them. So either way, I think we did okay. But let me know in the comment section what you guys want me to do next with regards to this challenge. We definitely need to do some more fishing out of that tiny little pool because that is just the craziest thing of all time. If you guys are new and you have not already, hit the subscribe button. Join the Lojo Outdoor fam, the best subscribers on YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Had a load of fun today. Caught some fish on some brim that we caught ourselves. Very fun, very rewarding to catch fish this way, but it is 92 degrees. It's hot. It's time for me to get out of here. 
I am getting out of here onto the next outdoor adventure. Fist bump, I'm out.